What is up guys? This is your raw boy Ben here and boy do I have a deliciously petty serving of absolutely shade and Freud for you ravenous raw true warriors out there. Brace yourselves. The latest dramatic dust up between Meghan Markle and her increasingly aggrieved orbit of exes and disgruntled associates is sure to leave you both appalled and tickled. So are you ready for this embarrassing reveal? According to Explosive new claims, it appears the enterprising Duchess of Defection has been taking some pretty liberal inspiration from her romantic past to build out the anemic content pipeline for her and Harry's new Netflix vanity project. So, I know you guys are excited to hear more about this, but before we move on to further details, I want to say a massive thank you for your enormous love and support, and if you haven't subscribe to the channel yet guys what on earth are you waiting for of course hit the all important subscribe button now and don't also forget to press that bell icon now let's get started with today's video here we go so now we're getting ripped Reports here, guys. Some big reports that Megan sizzling Italian Canadian ex flame Corey Vitellio has taken umbrage with the erstwhile caliente canoodling partner, appropriate one of his most treasured culinary specialities, as her own for an upcoming streaming cooking show. She's fronting and not just any signature dish either. We're talking about Vitiello's beloved olive oil lemon cake that Megan allegedly stole the recipe for after residing in his Toronto love shack for multiple years while aggressively loving bombing her way into Prince Harry's heart and sovereign Grant Gravy Train. Can you imagine the sheer causacity on display here for Megan to have the unmitigated goal to poach what was likely an intimate culinary keepsake of better? More affectionate times between herself and Vitiello, a humble but comforting homemade confection loaded with care and happy memories only for her to repackage it under the pretense of being some labor of sentimental love. I can only envision what the former yacht girl's jettison boo made of the news that his treasured ancestral sweet treat had been so presumptuously pilfered. The man probably did a spit take so vigorous when the tan mom first unveiled her lurid plagiarized Riviera themed pitch that it blew a hole through the stuffed crust of whatever deep dished artery clogger he was taste testing that day. You've got to be bloody kidding me with this, haven't you, Megs? For you to crisp brust my heart in pursuit of newly loosed roll sausage wallet, then to really stick the proverbial fork in me, you nick my recipe that took years for maternal devotion and carefully iteration to perfect. Fact, I should have known your laser-focused tremor of ambition couldn't resist quietly assimilating any cultural keepsake or culinary legacy that could theoretically turbocharge your tired old force for change branding as a self-styled Rachel Ray for the Yas Queen struggle cookie set. For those reasons and more, you can hardly blame Vitiello for getting his knives out and taking a few disgruntled swipes at the disgraced former cable starlet's latest grifty scheme to monetize ethnic appropriation. The resentment runs rightly deep after she unceremoniously discarded him back when their relationship had stopped being a net positive asset. Megan played the man like an absolute fiddle. A real fiddle, shacking up under the off spacious of ardent intimacy with a suitor providing the ideal smokescreen of camouflage, her parallel misadventures love bombing uh, the then isolated Harry into being her mark, only to cruelly cut the cord with Vichelio absolutely in pieces. Wow, wow, wow. Megan like we said, played the man like a fiddle, only to cut the cord, like we said. So, of course, there was no way any self-respecting bloke could hold himself back from openly mocking her latest bit of empty cultural pilfering. Not when Tan Mom appears to have deployed the oldest move in the delusional clout grifters playbook by shamelessly expropriating one of the few remaining curious from their discarded personal life that offended a semblance of heartfelt sincerity because folded within Vitiello's contempt towards her unwitting intellectual property theft, you can practically hear the fatigue exasperation over Megan yet again, appropriating lived hardships and emotional journeys she never actually experienced. This woman simply 
has not an ounce of authenticity or originality in her to generate resonant art that isn't steeped in aggregate thievery. Her bone-deep need to arrogate any indigenous cuisine or ephemeral sustainable lifestyle brand that could accessorize her woke coastal puppet show is so pathological at this point, I'm shocked she hasn't already swooped into trademark uncocked flat tummy teas or Gwyneth Paltrow vaginal jade eggs yet. Nope, Tan Mom's singular passion comes from scouring the internet for the latest fads to corrupt and drape herself in as a sort of inoffensive experimental safari tour guide for the goopy tamed aristocracy. Not from any wellspring of sincere appreciation for the lives and ancestral legacy she's artlessly appropriating as costume set dressing to hawk her tired reboots of White Oprah Awakenings. And sure, you could try making the tortured case that Megan's grifty recipe robbery and Corey's ensuing mockery of it all stemmed from a place of mutual woundedness over the past romantic dissolution and understandable wallowing in lingering dysfunction from a grieved party still unable to fully heal from the emotional whiplash. Maybe the newfound feud represents the final pathetic gasp of two mutually enabled narcissists bringing out the most obnoxious worst in each other. But come on, does anyone with any functional grasp on reality really see this as a classic case of mutual self-destruction? I don't think so. Not ignited between a pair of jaded former flames vying to salvage hurt egos. I certainly don't buy it for a second. No, in Megan's case, this recipe, RIP, appears to once again be nothing more than the latest grifty hustle in a lifetime of provocative gambits. Everything she does at this point just reeks of desperate plays for contrived authenticity as each previous stab at credibility gets casually discarded. Need to amplify her brand of ditzy anthropology. Wokeness for gossip pages and casually hits the cultural canon of marginalized communities of color struggling against generational stains of discrimination. Time to hook up more California blue bloods into briefly jocking your surrogate revolutionary steel gospel before the next quarterly subscription lapse. Sloppily appropriate some ancestral comfort recipes you're completely disconnected from while mouthing empty platitudes about your decolonized sustainable journey. Megan's entire grift has become an audacious, lavishly produced passion play actively orchestrating her own appropriation of the handicaps and traumas that minorities and working class families alike authentically endured having traditions, generational legacies and senses of community constantly disrespected or instrumentalized by aloof, uncaring coastal entities casually copying their entire civilizations for progressive cultural capital. Yes, of course. This is what we're talking about here. I'm an absolute disgrace that this has become to respected advocacy and legitimate humanitarianism. Only her unearned sense of oppressive grievance remains as she strips every lived cultural experience of its integrity. She's nothing more than a golem, greedily assimilating any profound signifiers of marginalization. So what do you guys think will happen next in the Sussex saga? Of course, only time will tell. But until then, we will see you again for more royal news and analysis. Goodbye for now.